Hey everyone, it's Julie at the Paper Bag Lady One. Hope everybody is doing well today. I am going to attempt something different <laughs> here. <laughs> I have had many people ask me about the construction of my albums, um, both my standard paper bag albums and then also the ones I do made out of children's books or coloring books or things like that. And um, <clears throat> I have spent the last couple days in a frenzy for some reason of going through children's books and cutting them up and starting to get things set up. So I thought I would try and show you um, a little bit of what I have done. Um, first of all, I will show you the paper bag album. People ask me how I bind them or how I make them. Um, I take three paper bags and I place them on top of each other every other direction. So bottom, top, bottom, if that makes sense, and fold them. And then I iron them. Um, I iron them all because otherwise they're just too wrinkly and puffy for me. You can do it. I mean, I've I've done it on occasion when I'm too lazy to get the iron out, but mostly I press them all. Um, and then, and this is the good part, then I take a big box of them to my mother. Hi, Mama. I love you. I take them to my mother, and she sews them together for me <laughs> because I can't sew a straight line. Is that pathetic or what? Um, so she just uses her regular sewing machine and stitches it on through, and that is how they are bound. Um, sometimes I will do them with book rings. Sometimes I will just poke some holes here and pull ribbon or whatever through, but most of the time, as you can see, they are sewn. And the two most frequent sizes that I make are 6x6 six six or 8x8, eight eight, and I buy the bags at my local um, restaurant supply store. I am sure you're, I know you can buy this kind of bag at the grocery store. They're a little bit thinner. These are fairly thick and they are kind of hard in the um, sewing machine, but it, it hasn't done damage to it. The larger size is a thinner bag. They don't have the thicker in this exact size. It would be this high, but it would probably only be about six and a half inches wide. And they're even more awkward to sew. So anyway, um, so that is what I do. It's a six by six. It's actually a little bit larger than six by six when folded. So when I cut my base paper, it is six by six. And on the eight by eight, when I cut the base paper, it's actually eight inches this way and seven and three quarter inches this way. Um, but it's just easier to say eight by eight. And, and that one is just sewn as well. So that's the big secret is that I don't even do it. <laughs> I don't even do it myself. My mom has to do it for me. <laughs> and I'm very grateful that she does it. But anyway, so here's an album that I'm working on. I'm almost finished with this one. It just needs covers. Um, so as you can see, this is using children's books and coloring books. I love to use the coloring books. Um, this one is Sesame Street. These are the pages from the coloring books. This is from just regular children's books. And these are actually um, flashcards and other card games that I have. And this I just put on here and made it so like you can fold it out and put pictures there. And often what I do is I will do one page for each character or depending on how many characters are there, I'll do a double spread. But this one has one for each. So here we have Big Bird with um, Snuffleupagus. And then here we have Grover and Cookie Monster. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and Bert and Ernie. And this one was more difficult. Elmo and the coloring book had Zoe in it. And here's the Zoe playing card. But I didn't have any books to cut up that were newer. So none of them had Zoe in it. So they had this chick in it and I can't remember her name. Um, but so she's there and she's actually also on this little game piece. And then here we have the Count and Oscar the Grouch at the end. Um, so that's kind of what it looks like after I've done everything except for the covers again which is the last thing I do but here is another one that I'm kind of in the midst of working on so this is what it looks like before I've done anything else to it and this one is Mickey Mouse obviously <clears throat> from Mickey Mouse coloring book um, and this is actually Mickey Mouse clubhouse coloring book so you can see all the gears here instead of using flowers as embellishments I actually will die cut some gears in the primary colors like Mickey uses and do that. So there we have, you know, Mickey and Minnie and Goofy and Pluto and on and on and on and on. And so um, the way that I get to that is to start with my coloring books and I get two, I get them at the dollar store um, and I get two of them because I like to do this pocket 
where it is the same image. So I'll gather all my things and then make sure, I'll hold it up and make sure. Sometimes you can just go like this and the pictures line up perfectly. Sometimes you kind of have to adjust and cut it. Um, but then I cut this and these, I actually, rather than cutting to the eight by seven and three quarters, I actually cut it to seven and three quarters by seven and a half because I use a solid color cardstock um, on the back. And the reason I do that for this is that these pages are so thin. And honestly, also with the tear, it doesn't quite go to seven and three quarter inches across that way. Um, so that is how I start. And once I have it all laid out, I will just flip them over and draw some swirly lines and cut them out. And I will show you that on a different, um, a different album. I have some samples, but once I have this all done and laid out, that's when I go through my pile of old books and I will start pulling out images. And so here's Mickey and Pluto and that one, it might go here where it's just Mickey. Um, this one might go here. I'm not sure. Here's Daisy. So she'll go on the Daisy page. I definitely need to go to the thrift store and get some more Disney books. I have lots left, but they don't all have single images on the pages. They will have the whole gang or two or three of them, which is fine. Um, but if I can, I like to do each character on each page. This one has um, Goofy and Mickey, and so that will go on this page with Goofy and Mickey. Um, so then I end up with lots and lots of piles of pages and half chopped up books and whatnot. And then um, after I do that to start adding things into it, that is when I go to my stash of goodies. And for the Disney ones, for example, <laughs> ready? Ah! <laughs> Those are all Disney playing cards. <laughs> Is that pathetic or what? But no, seriously, they are. They're all Disney playing cards. And some of them are more modern ones. Like these are from Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. So I'll definitely use those. Some of them, um, you know, are older. It just depends on the project that I'm doing and how I think it works. So I'll use those. I also have Disney game pieces, like from Disney Memory. Um, I have Disney Dominoes. I have all sorts of things. So again, depending on on what I what I like or what I find, like you can see on this one, I used these are from a memory game. But once I got over here to some of them, like um, for some reason, no, they had Bert. I just didn't like it. Um, so what I did is this is actually um, a domino. The other half of the domino is back here with the count and I just it's it's a really thick chipboard but I just cut it up so um that's kind of how that works this stash right here is going to be nursery rhyme which a lot of you know is one of my favorite things and these you know this is what it looks like after it's cut and got the little pocket on it um, these it came from two of the same book, but they were clearly different um, editions because I was all excited when I had all my pictures, my double pictures, two of everything. When I cut them out, this is what I discovered that, you can see that? One of them is about a quarter of an inch smaller than the other one. So I thought, hmm, what should I do? But luckily the image was seven and three quarters across. And so I just did the, the larger image on the bottom. And then I took the top image and cut them down so that they kind of look swirly. And then what I will do is take this piece of cardstock and adhere that to that. And then take my scallop edge scissors and cut around there. And then I will adhere the pocket to that. And so I will end up with this. Now, because this book paper was a little thicker, I didn't worry about backing it. And also because it's a little thicker, I did not glue it shut at the top there because what I can then do is when I have cards or goodies or things like that, I can not only use the pocket back here, but I can also slip in there as a pocket. Um, so that is how that is going to work. And then with these, what I will do is get my stash of things to make photo mats on these. 
I will probably end up using, and let me show you some examples here, images from this book of nursery rhymes, or oops, this one, or even possibly this one because these are all just sort of tone on tone. And the images here are so colorful that I could do colorful ones on top of them, but it might get a little chaotic. And if I do decide to put some with color on it, I will use a larger one on the back and then a smaller one in the front, if that makes any sense at all. And then I will go through my stash of things like Mother Goose um, playing cards and Old Maid to add into the pockets and things like that. And um, I also have, and there's some printed out, I have some different images on the computer that I can print out and use as well. Here's old pages from other nursery rhyme albums I've made. So for example, there's the rhyme for Jack Spratt. I can cut that out and use that on the page. One of these albums does have a page with Jack Spratt in it. So that gives you an idea of what I might do with that. Now, here's another one that kind of gives you a little bit different. Those were all 8x8s, eight eight, and here I was going to do a Cinderella 6x6, six six, and I actually decided to do something a little bit different for this one. Now, I had two of the same book, so I could do the pocket if I wanted to, but I decided not to. Um, for various reasons, I decided I'd try something different. So this one actually will flip open and then there's some more of the story there. So this will have some things tucked in that pocket and I will put some corners up here so that you could tuck a picture in it. But I saved the bottom of the page and you can pull it out here. And what I will end up doing eventually is, for example, I will add some flowers down here and probably one on the edge of that, which will make that easier to pull out. Um, but that is how this goes along. And then this one will open. I had to tie the ones that open from the side so they wouldn't flap all the time. So that one will open like that. And that is how this whole Cinderella book is going to, to work. Again, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to add into them yet. Um, I have a lot of Cinderella playing cards. Most of them are modern, so that doesn't really look right. However, I do have these which tell the story as well. So there's a chance that I will add some of these um, into that. And I also have Snow White there and Winnie the Pooh and uh, what's her face? Sleeping Beauty. So that is how I will work that six by six. And this Snow White here, I was planning on doing basically the same thing that you saw with the nursery rhyme albums. Um, I had two large books and so there's the image and the other image and I'll make a pocket. However, when I got to the end, I discovered that I wanted to use this and I wanted to use this, but I can't <laughs> because I only have two books. So I had to rethink that and I do have the same image from a smaller book. So I'm still throwing that around or here's a large one that does not have the same images, but so I might end up sort of interspersing some and have some pages with pockets and some without. I haven't quite worked it out yet. Um, and again, then I have the Snow White cards here, but then I also have these little ones. Like these have all the dwarfs. Um, there's a card for each dwarf. I have that type of thing. Um, I have, for example, let's see here. I have some different Apple buttons, which I might use on the tops of tags, that sort of thing. So that's what we're going to do with uh, with Snow White there. And then finally, the last one that I have going on is Benjamin Bunny. And Benjamin Bunny started life as two books. And again, we did the pocket thing. This one I did not leave open at the top because that paper's fairly thin and I didn't want to worry about it. So there's Benjamin Bunny and it, it goes in order. It doesn't have all the pages, but it, you know, tells the basic story of Benjamin Bunny. And then to embellish Benjamin and to do photo mats, I will probably, um, probably for photo mats, I will use the leftover papers that I used to back 
that, which is from Prima's Nursery Tales, which is a couple years old. 2000, I don't know, was it nine maybe? And then to embellish and add into things, I will probably use images from here because Benjamin Bunny. I have lots of books with images, but most of them are not already in that nice little square all ready to go. So if you take that out and mat it, that will be perfect to tuck in there. And then people can write on the back of it or put a photo on the back. I also have the Peter Rabbit Nursery. And as you can see here, here's some mobile pieces. And this is from Benjamin Bunny, so I can cut those squares out. I could use them here and kind of put some flowers around it like I did in the Sesame Street one. And then I also have a smaller book. And this one would make good photo mats too. It's a good image size. And this one's just a little bit smaller. And then finally, in this little teeny tiny book, these I could just cut out and mat, and they would be perfect as well. As you can see, I have a, <laughs> I have a lot of Beatrix Potter, and this isn't even... It feels like it's hardly even, even scratching the surface of the Beatrix Potter. But um, this is why I collect so many books, because sometimes you want to have, you know, several of them. Um, here is a Night Before Christmas one that I've started. And all the images here, let me take that out. So you can see they go together and they would make a page in the books. Um, however, this one actually ended up using four, count them, <laughs> four of the same book because there were several pages in here that I wanted to use the front and the back. So, and then all these little mats that pull out continue to tell the story in the same order. Um, they're just from different books because I probably have 25 Night Before Christmas books. And I, I've not quite worked out how I'm going to embellish this one yet either, to be honest with you. I, I've gone back and forth with putting things on here. Um, I actually have these old tags, like this is Noise Racket, and in this picture, remember he heard a, a noise and he flung open the sash to see out what was the matter or whatever. So I have those little cards for different things. This one says, um, sweet candy because they're dreaming of sugar plums and so i might attach those to the top of a tag in there um this one says snow because the moon on the crest of the new fallen snow or the breast of the new fallen snow whatever um so sometimes you need to have more than one book so you know people laugh at me when i buy that the same book over and over again but um, sometimes you need it and this will probably be the next one I do. I love Sorcerer Mickey. And these books are really easy to take apart. You just rip off the covers and then there's staples there and you pull them out. Um, this is one I'll probably have to go shopping for some more because like that image and that image, I'd probably like to use both of them, but it's going to be a problem because I don't have double of, well, I would need quadruple to be able to get a pocket. Um, I really like the pockets and I have to say thank you to Cody because she's the one that kind of started making the pockets um, that double pocket with the little scallop edge across the top so Cody I totally stole that and I'm running with it but you knew that already <laughs> oh my goodness so anyway so I hope that gives you an idea of what you can do with books old books coloring books um, games things like that that you use you can just use the images. You can tell the story, which is what I like to do. If, it, if there is a story to be told, I like to go in order and, and tell the story. Um, and it's, it's fun. And honestly, it's relatively inexpensive because um, when, you, when you do this, for example, here's Mickey. You know, I paid $2 for the coloring books. And then this is just basic cardstock. It's not anything fancy. It's just... Oops, it doesn't have the tag in it. It's just, you know, the pack you can get at Michael's or Joanne's for like four bucks or something like that. And then I buy all the games and all the playing cards and everything at thrift stores. For very, And even if you don't buy them at thrift stores, a lot of them you can find current, um, like the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse cards, you can go to the Dollar Tree and buy a pack of two or three sets of playing cards. And, um, and it's something different. And, you know, it, it, it honestly is a relatively inexpensive way to do things. Um, you know, I, I know there's not really a whole lot of fanciness going on with these albums, and I like a bit of fanciness as much as anybody else. Um, 
but truly I make a lot of mine for people. I make them, I sell them, I do a lot of craft shows, and the albums have to be pretty understandable for your average Joe who doesn't scrapbook and who wouldn't know what to do with, you know, all kinds of foldy and, and flippy and embellished to the hilt things, which again, there's nothing wrong with that. I like that as much as anybody else, but it can be overwhelming to someone who doesn't have a clue. They just want something they can pick it up and they can say, okay, my pictures go there and um, I can write here. And I can cover this picture if I want, or I can put a picture on the back and flip it over, whatever. Um, so, and now my cell phone is ringing. And now you can all see that I have the X-Files ringtone on my cell phone. So, I am going to go. Thank you all for watching. And if you have any questions, just give me a holler. Bye.